Are you ready for some science? I'm ready for McSteiger science. Tiger Science. Welcome to another ex actually this is our first. Welcome to the first McSteiger Science episode. I am Jen Steiger and I'm McSalinger. McSalinger. Today, only for our viewers. You guys are going to be treated to an epic opportunity because we are going to demonstrate the scientific method and providing you with an example of the scientific method with us showing you and studying and doing a lab looking at the reaction between Mentos and Diet Coke. And through this, you will be able to see and think and view and dream about the scientific method. Step one, introduction. And you know what? We created an awesome introduction for this experiment. We actually wrote it down. Wait, why is this dim? Jen Steiger, you're wearing sunglasses. Here's the introduction. Mentos and Diet Coke is a combination that has often been talked about for many years because of its supposed exhilarating reaction when combined together. YouTube videos, Mythbusters, even an episode of David Letterman and many others have shown the reaction of an immediate foaming of the Coke creating a fountain-like response or reaction. The height of the fountain and the length of the fountain seems to vary though from test to test depending on different factors and variables. You don't say. The explanation of this reaction has also been discussed to many different degrees. Carbon dioxide, Mentos pits or nucleation sites. Word wall where carbon dioxide bubbles form, the weight of the candy and the nature of the coke itself all play a role in this reaction. Not having the opportunity to witness this reaction myself, well that's, that's not really true, I mean, we've had the opportunity to witness it, but we're pretending that we haven't experienced this ourselves. So not having the opportunity to witness this reaction myself, this carefully controlled experiment will hopefully answer the questions I have surrounding Mentos and Diet Coke and confirm the predictions that I have towards it. Now the next step in your scientific process is your purpose. Why am I doing this? The purpose of this experiment is to confirm the many reports of a reaction occurring when mixing Mentos with Diet Coke. The reaction being an immediate foaming of the cola into a fountain-like display. That's a nice display of the fountain likes. Hypothesis. If I place the original pack of Mentos Original Candy into a bottle of Diet Coke, a reaction of foaming and fountain-like response would occur. More specifically, I predict the fountain to be about one one meter in height and lasts for approximately 10 seconds. I believe 
this will happen for a couple reasons. Firstly, my research tells me this is a common occurrence, and I've seen it happen through many videos. Secondly, though, the reasoning behind the reaction seems very logical to me. The fact that the Mentos candy has many moon-like pits, nucleation sites, for carbon dioxide bubbles to form, combined with the fact that the nature of Diet Coke being very gassy, er, you just said gassy, gassy, and easy to foam, even by just shaking it, like we did with this one, like this? No, sorry. it would seem reasonable for this fountain-like reaction to occur. An experiment. You're going to be dealing with several variables. Variables are things that might change. There are three different types. We have, first of all, your independent variable. In this case, the candy. The original Mentos mint candy versus a plain controlled candy. You also have dependent variables. In this case, this is the reaction once the candy is changed to Mentos. We'll be looking at the height of the fountain and how long the fountain lasts. Those are our dependent variables. Lastly, you've got your controlled variables. They're controlled. Hence the name. Yeah. Diet Coke, the size of the bottle, the number of the candies placed in the coke, even the temperature or the wind might be a factor. Those yes. are your controlled variables. Now on to the materials. Uh, so we have one pack of original mint Mentos candy, Tic Tacs. We have umbrellas. Um, in case we do not want to get wet, um, tonight we are meeting a variety of different uh, uh, people. We want to be very professional-like, so we want to make as sure always. that, yeah, as always. Um, so we do not want to be smelling like Diet Coke. So we need umbrellas, which are out in the car. We don't have right now. Um, our one liter bottle, or two liter bottle of Diet Coke. We also have a stopwatch, which is very effective for measuring time. Yeah. We also have a sheet of paper. <laughs> Those are hard to come by. You, you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Two meter sticks to make sure we measure the height. And with those meter sticks, we are going to Careful. be on a table. So we need a table, we need to measure the... Keep rolling, keep rolling. Oh, um, many. We will also be needing a cue card. No, no, seriously. <laughs> Step one of your procedure is to set up your experiment by securing the bottle on the ground in a way that it won't tip over. <laughs> Upon a potential reaction. There you go. Secured. Step two is to catch the paper and umbrella that are blowing away in the wind, which is an inevitable problem. Done. Next, set up the meter sticks together vertically from the top of the bottle. Using a hair clip. One partner, partner may want to stand on a table to achieve the height needed for the measurement. Okay, I got the table. Safety first. Yeah. Step two. Unwrap the Mentos candy and place them in a similar position into a rolled up piece of paper. Okay, so I'm going to unwrap this. Don't want to lose them. You'll notice, folks, that we didn't prepare any of this ahead of time because we wanted to show you the struggles that you too might face. Yes, good point. As an inherent part of this experiment. Okay, so that's all. Don't want to 
leave any garbage there. A similar position. It's similar. Next, you want to open the Diet Coke for the first time. Make sure it's a fresh bottle. Don't use one that you have previously consumed. Now this is for the control, right, first? Absolutely, so we're gonna start with our Tic Tacs. Okay, we don't really need to put it in there because they're small enough, I can just drop them. How many does oh. it say on the procedure? Because we have to remember, make sure you say exactly how many of each. Approximately one full package of Tic Tacs. To be more precise, that many. You're losing all your Tic Tacs. That's all okay. Right. okay. Now. Open? Yes. Open the Diet Coke for the first time. Oh, 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 oh you heard that, eh? That satisfying sound. Okay. Now you want to carefully place the cue card over the top of that bottle. This is how you can carefully... Right, you want to go on here? And, and accurately... You want to stand up there? And... No. Have the stopwatch ready for immediate reaction. Ready? And... Start. Start the stopwatch once the fountain overflowing starts. Time how long it will last. The score will be recorded into a quantitative observation table. It's going pretty good. Wow. Isn't this interesting that a Tic Tac would do this as well? exactly call this a fountain like response right it's not so much a fountain but there definitely is a reaction definitely there's timing but as you can see there's not much of a height looks like we got about uh, it probably reached what three centimeters I would say that's a fair estimate okay so three centimeters and we got uh, 52 seconds on our reading so 52 seconds of length, 3 centimeters is the height of our control. So it was just interesting to know there is a reaction to Tic Tacs. So we're gonna make this second attempt, as you can see. Uh, our first method uh, didn't really work out too well. The Mentos did not slide easily through the paper as what was in first anticipated. So just like any experiment, we are scientists, you guys are scientists, expect mistakes. But science is all about learning from your errors. So we're gonna try this method. We're gonna place the Mentos in the cue card and let it slide through the cue card. Are you all ready, uh, McSallinger? I am. This wasp is interfering. Yeah, wasps. Uh, we're not too much of a fan here. So, okay. I will now gingerly deposit the Mentos into the Diet Coke and let them roll into the bottle. <laughs> well, the umbrella kind of trapped <laughs> a lot of it in there uh, but I did get a reading well, that's excellent yes it did reach at 198 centimeters oh that's right almost to the top that's beautiful um, I'm meeting people was... tonight uh, very important people precious people uh, with our class um, I'm gonna be smelling like cold. welcome back McStiger science fans well we have returned from our epic experiment uh, as you've seen, the results were outstanding. Now I happen to have here 
our quantitative data recorded on this coke-soaked piece of paper. And so... Uh, do you need this? Is, is it okay if it rolls down? Yes, it's okay. okay. Thank you. Um, what we have here is that the Tic Tacs, in terms of duration, we had a 52 second reaction. Now according to the height of the fountain of the Tic Tacs, about 3 centimeters. Okay, to contrast the original Mint Mentos. A 5 second reaction in duration. Now the height was a distinct 198 centimeters. Very precise, 198 mm -hmm. centimeters. I think what's really significant there is uh, the Tic Tacs, the fountain, if you can call it a fountain, lasted much longer, uh, 52 seconds, whereas the uh, Mint Mentos lasted 25 seconds. Um, that just tells us that the flow rate was so much uh, greater with the Mentos. There was a lot more force, uh, much more quicker, and obviously the height. Um, I guess we'll do now the uh, measurement for how much the uh, Coke is remaining. This was the Tic Tacs. So you can see there's still a lot more of the Diet Coke remaining inside the bottle. And we'll just take these lovely cylinders that are really clean. And what's very unique, I don't know if you guys noticed it there when I was pouring it in, a lot of the Tic Tacs are still left in there, which is kind of cool. So we have an additional 900. So there's 1,900 milliliters of Diet Coke still left in that bottle. So even though the little tiny fountain lasts along, not much of the Coke escaped. Only 100 milliliters. Now we have left the Coke remaining after the Mentos reaction. And we're going to test and see if it is a greater or, or lower volume than what we saw with the Tic Tacs. I don't know if you're noticing this. Look how many of the Mentos are left. There's a lot of the Mentos candy still left in the container. Um, You know, McSellinger, I just realized something. What's that? Uh, watching the Mythbusters video comparing uh, original Mentos with uh, the candy-coated Mentos, they talked about how the, uh, uh, the original Mentos, a big reason why you get the, the fountain is because of the, all the little pits, the nucleation sites that we talked about in the introduction and the hypothesis, right? Mm -hmm. And how they compare with the candy coated ones, there's a glaze around these. There's some kind of candy coated glaze around that, so you don't get the pits or the nucleation sites with these. That's correct. Confectioner's glaze, I believe. Confection, yeah. But take a look at, uh, I don't know if you noticed it, you can actually see them in here. All those little Mentos are still inside, they're still intact, which tells me that the fountain was created by the outer layer of the original Mentos. And then you know how Mentos candy on the inside, it's no more nucleation sites, I guess. There's, there's not as many of that in the middle. So that just proves that point that it's the outer layer of the Mentos candy that makes this reaction. Absolutely. So in fact, the Coke is not actually having any contact with the internal structure. Yeah. Understood. All right. So we got looks like 610 milliliters left. Absolutely. So obviously, um, according to this, we have uh, proven a, a huge, fascinating point that Mentos candy and Diet Coke have a huge reaction. You take a look at our control with Tic Tacs, very little reaction. The Mentos candy, uh, a huge reaction when it comes to the amount of Coke left, the, the precise height of the fountain, and uh, the third one was the speed of the Mentos candy. Uh, it was very quick. So that was, that, that's fantastic. Now, to add to your analysis, Jen Stagger, I'd like to just explain a few things about our experiment setup. Now, 
We're scientists, so we acknowledge that sometimes things don't work out as anticipated. We thought we had a foolproof plan, and clearly, as you could see, mistakes were made. Um, but we rectified the situation, you know? We reflected on our mistakes, and we made changes to our methods and our procedure in order to ensure the results that we were aiming to, to achieve. And did we? Yeah. So, uh, so that was a, a good piece of analysis. Two pieces of analysis: Why did the reactions occur, and uh, going over the errors. That's so. That's a fantastic analysis. Mm. Um, so now, in conclusion, <laughs> uh, referring back to our hypothesis, and again, I wrote up this nice little uh, conclusion here. As I've mentioned previously, my hypothesis was correct in achieving a reaction between Mentos and Coke. However, the extent of the reaction is where I was incorrect. If you want to rewind and go back to when we actually did the experiment, you can see me kneeling down on top of the table. I did not expect the reaction that we were going to get. I expected, what did I say, 100 milliliters? Something, Something milliliters. Like 100 centimeters. About a meter. Yes, indeed. That's exactly okay. Well, we got to twice. I underestimated the height and length of the fountain. My hypothesis seems more like a prediction for a half pack, which makes sense. Are you drinking that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Which would be a good extension of this experiment. So, having an extension would be kind of neat of just measuring uh, like half a pack to see if my prediction, my hypothesis, would be for that rather than the full pack, because the full pack equaled almost two meters. Half a pack, logically, would mean a meter. Height of fountain. Absolutely. Now, what about some other extensions? Oh boy, I mean, there's no end to the number of variables you could introduce. You could try a different brand of cola. You could try regular Coca Cola versus Diet Coke. You could introduce different types of candies, even different flavors of Mentos. That's the scientific method. Uh, we just gave you a great uh, example that is extremely precise with our measurements and with the way we went about uh, the scientific method. Um, that's Mentos and Coke. There definitely was a reaction. And uh, yeah, so review this video, review the scientific method, prepare yourself, make sure everything is uh, prepared before you begin the experiment, and uh, good luck on your next lap. We'll see this you next is, time. Yeah, we'll see you next time on another adventure of Mixed Diver Science.